the entrance antiphon for the Feast of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, Martyrs. The souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven, the saints who follow the footsteps of Christ, and since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of the two great and famous martyrs of 16th century England, Thomas More and John Fisher, men of outstanding holiness, personal, wis personal holiness, wisdom, and ultimately of courage. Let us honor them today for their commitment to their faith. Let us humbly acknowledge our sins before the Lord, especially the times when we have failed to profess and defend our Catholic faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that, strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, settling them in Hala at the harbor, a river of Gozan and the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rights of the nations whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, give up your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law, which I enjoined on your fathers and which I sent you by my servants, the prophets. They did not listen, but were as stiff-necked as their fathers, whom had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes the covenant which he had made with their fathers and the warnings which he had given them, till in his great anger against Israel, 
the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Help, Help us, us with, with your, your right, right hand, hand, O Lord. Lord. O oh God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. Help us with your right hand, O oh Lord, and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. Help us with your right hand, O oh Lord, and answer us. Have, have not you, O God, rejected us, so that you go not forth, O God, with our armies? Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging and you, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, you will be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice a splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden gleam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye while the wooden beam is in your eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, and then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother, brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, first order of business, they have loosened up the restrictions because of the Wuhan thing, and now you're able to receive on the tongue, but you have to come over to me. Uh, that's, I'm not sure I understand that, but that's what it is. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, I think it's a lot safer to receive on the tongue, because I can almost, it's almost impossible to put the host in your hand without making some kind of contact, but I can absolutely put it on your tongue without making contact, so... Anyway, but it's up to you. Today we celebrate the feast of John Fisher and Thomas More. The story of Thomas More is very compellingly put forth in the play and the movie A Man for All Seasons. In fact, the movie won the Oscar for Best Picture in 1966, and it's still one of my all-time favorites. I think it's the greatest movie Hollywood ever produced. And it tells the story of the courage and wisdom uh, and, just, and the very wonderful sense of humor of St. Thomas More. It doesn't mention Fisher, it only once in passing does his name come up. But both were men that cut of the same cloth. They were, More was a layman, um, but he rose to be Chancellor of England, the, the highest um, position in the, in the realm that a commoner, a non-royal, can have. Uh, a very, very good man, very holy man, very wise man, very well-educated man, very intelligent man. Fisher was the same way. He was known as an academic. He became a priest, and actually, he was such, such was the, his uh, reputation for holiness and for learning that he was, became the confessor to the queen, the grandmother of Henry, uh, probably the mother of Henry VIII. And in fact, <clears throat> when he became bishop, he actually was one of the king's close counselors. And in fact, Henry once boasted he had the best bishop in England counseling him, who, you know, John Fisher, whom he later had killed. Well, Henry wanted to divorce his wife, and um, so he decided to do this. He has to make himself the head of the church in England. You've got to understand, in the 16th century, the church was in desperate need of reform. Uh, there were all kinds of problems. And England, you know, probably the best uh, representative of these problems was Cardinal Wolsey, another man whom Henry had put to death. Cardinal Wolsey was the bishop of eight different dioceses, which meant he got a salary from all eight. 
but he didn't live in any of them. He lived in London, um, and he was chancellor to the king, and he was a very high pollutant guy. In fact, he had more money than the king, and he made the big mistake of inviting Henry over to his house for dinner one night. And when Henry saw, oh my gosh, this guy's better off than I am, that's when he decided he would kill him and take his property, which he did. But Wolsey, like just brought every other bishop in England, had a common law wife. In fact, I know a guy who actually worked in London for a while. He claims he met one of Cardinal Wolsey's great, 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 great grandsons. You know, the good news is the Wolsey are still Catholic. I, I think you'd think they'd wander off the plantation somewhere, but no, they didn't. They they're still in the fold. And uh, but you know and. It was the symptoms. So when Henry told the bishops of England that he wanted to make himself the head of the church in England, he said, are you guys okay with that? They all said, no, sure, fine, why not, no problem. <laughs> you know, how does that happen? Well, it happened, you know. And that was the problem with the church. It was in desperate need of reform. And then you got these two people, Moore and Fisher, who were about the only two in England who really opposed the king, and uh, they got clobbered for it. Uh, Henry had them put to death, but you know they had a whole. They marched to a completely different beat of a completely different drummer. In the movie and play *The Man for All Seasons*, there's a great encounter between the Duke of Norfolk, who is Moore's great friend, and Thomas Moore. And Norfolk is trying to get Moore to sign this document where he recognizes Henry as the head of the church in England, and he says, "I can't sign that thing." He said, "Oh, why not, Thomas? We all signed it, you know. Or why can't you sign it too?" For fellowship, if nothing else. And Moore said, if you, well, and if you go to heaven for following your conscience and I go to hell for following, not following mine, will you come to me with me to hell for fellowship? I mean, come on. They were both operating on prudence. For, for Norfolk, prudent meant saving your neck and saving your title. Um, he didn't care about his soul. He just cared about having a comfortable life in this world. But Moore was fixed on the kingdom of heaven. And for him, the most prudent thing is to oppose the king because the king is clearly wrong. He's clearly going way beyond his bounds, and he needs to be opposed. Even though it cost him his head, he saved his soul. And my brothers and sisters, that's what it has to come down to. Sometimes you have to suffer for the truth. Um, sadly, in every generation of the church is an age of martyrdom, and ours is proving to be that same way. The whole idea is we do not fold our hand, we do not give up, we still fight and, and witness to the power of Christ. Because in the end, my brothers and sisters, I'd much rather be where Thomas More is now than Henry VIII or even the Duke of Norfolk. And I thank you for listening. O oh, Heavenly Father, we turn to you once again, asking you to be mindful of our needs as we summon our brothers Thomas and John to join their prayers to ours that we may obtain from you these favors. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, so they will guide us to the holiness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So they will lead us throughout the world, especially those in our land. They will work to bring about peace and justice and safety for all people and to protect life from conception and natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those afflicted with the coronavirus, that they will find healing. Those who will take care of them, and all the others that are still without the disease, that they may be kept safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the poor, sick, and elderly, that they will have their needs fulfilled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear in thanksgiving for the rain that we receive, that the farmers may have abundant crops, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, those who have perished, family and friends, those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living Lord, may the sacrifice that we offer you give you the worship you deserve from your creatures. Give us the grace to imitate your glorious saints of old. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name our Lord forever and ever.
Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your faith. Lord, is great and glorious in his name. You are worthy of the Lord. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, John Fisher and Thomas More, poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with all the powers in heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, and the Saints of Christ, we are the